Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Siegel, and it is my pleasure to talk to you about coding, specifically about the evaluation and management services for potential melanoma patients when you will be using a molecular assay. Or another way to call it, let's do a derm tech. To walk through this, as I know this can be a subject that can be confusing for many, I'm going to walk us through this using the CPT mobile quick graph app. This is put out by the AMA. It is a free app, though, to get all the extra bells and whistles, they charge a subscription fee each year. And for me, in my role in the RUC process, it is well worth it. When you open the app, you come to this screen where you can click on easily find CPT codes. And we decide to look at office and other outpatient services, and we will work on established patients. If we go from there, we see we can either use the code list or we can use the ENM selection wizard, which we will use today to explain our logic. Here we are, it opens to the CMS 1995 guidelines. The 95 guidelines are variable interpreted by some payers, so we will use the 1997 guidelines for our discussion. Sometimes you can get away with less in the 1995 guidelines, but many carriers are interpreting them in such a way that there is confusion and we would like to avoid confusion and to keep it simple. So here we are, the open screen for 1997 guidelines. I will reset anything I've done in the past, and let's start rocking and rolling. First, we start out with a chief complaint. If you have no chief complaint, you cannot bill the visit. That is critically important for every insurer. So we go ahead and pick a chief complaint. What that might be, let's say you've got a funny looking mole. That's a reasonable chief complaint. It's something in the patient's own words. We all learned that in the first year of med school. Then we go on to the history of present illness. And what we'd like to do is to think about what the options are and what we need to have. Remember, you're supposed to document to the highest level based on the documentation that you've done that is medically necessary. So one to three bullets is brief, one four plus is extended. And these bullets generally, in this circumstance, location is important. So if the patient had something on his left arm, that's location for three months, that's duration, that grew fast, that's timing, and it itches. That is four bullet points, all very reasonable. For the review of systems, we obviously will review the skin system since we are, after all, dermatologists. And if there's nothing else going on, there's no other complaints. If there's other problems, list them here. Now, if they have a review of systems, the different levels, problem pertinent is one review of systems, extended is two to nine. It is very reasonable to do a constitutional review of symptoms. Is the patient feeling tired? Do they have malaise at work? Anything that might be relevant, after all, in this case, rule out melanoma, you're worried about a cancer, but anything else that might be relevant. And again, that can even be something such as musculoskeletal, psychiatric, whatever is relevant to you as a dermatologist. And again, psychiatric can be important if the patient's had a history of non-compliance or being difficult to work with or having problems with doctors. Anything that's relevant, you can pick those. Past medical history is easy. Pertinent is one of three. Complete is two of three, two to three of three. And the explanations on the right-hand side of the screen, if these are all confusing terms, you can simply open them up and you can learn that the past family and social history consist of a review of three areas, the past history, the patient's experience with illness, operations, and injuries, the family history, which everybody he's related to, and the social history that's age appropriate for past and current activities. And again, it could be an interval history, but again, usually for this, it will be what's relevant. And again, to be pertinent, at least one specific item from three areas must be documented in the record. And to be completed, one must be documented from two of the three. And this will be given to you as a handout, so you need not try to read far ahead. You can have this to enjoy. Now, so we've got our past medical history, and this can be patient has atypical nevus syndrome, or the patient doesn't have atypical nevus syndrome but had some moles removed in the past. Family history, dad had melanoma, or any other malignancy, anything that may be related to risk. In this case, we'll throw in a social history, too. The patient loves to get drunk and sunbathe, don't we all? So when we look at this, we find that at the bottom, this has given us a detailed history. And that's the level of history that we would need for a level four established patient. It is beyond what we would need for a level three patient. Let's go to examination. 
we can choose an examination type. This is the easy part. We're dermatologists, so pick a skin exam. And for the skin examination, as you'll see, we have a number of things here. And if we look at the information on there, we have a comprehensive level exam that all items in the shaded areas must be selected. In addition, one item from each non-shaded system must be selected. In response to that, just think about this as dermatologists, we're probably not going to be doing comprehensive examinations, but we can do pretty much just below there. So let's take this step by step as the AMA lays it out. Click and pick constitutional. Well, it may be too complex or not medically necessary to pick something such as all the vital signs or at least three of the seven. We may decide not to do that, but general appearance, that's very reasonable. You know, does the patient seem to be with it? Well-nourished, well-developed, and no acute distress is the usual buzz sentence we use. That's legit, and that gives us our first bullet point. We move on to the eyes. The inspection of conjunctivity and lids. In this case, the word and means or. You can look at either one. That's bullet number two. Uh, we go here, and we click and pick once again. An inspection of lips, teeth, and gums. An examination of oropharynx. Again, we can get, we click and pick on these, and voila, two more bullet points. And you may be saying we're dermatologists, lips are still our venue, and the oropharynx. Patients get cancers in the mouth, people who've been smokers, people who've chewed snuff, people who've been on chronic steroids, people with immunosuppression from any reason, there may be something going on in the mouth. It is not an unreasonable exam for a dermatologist to do. We then go to the neck. Well, you palpate the neck. Most of the time when we palpate neck, we go for lymphatic tissue, and lymph nodes, but you're palpating, look for the thyroid gland. Again, picking up a thyroid nodule is not all that rare. You can argue this, so we'll just say it's bullet five if you do it. Let's go on then to lymphatic system. You palpate the nodes, the, you know, and or, in this case, you'll probably, if it's above the neck, you'll do, you know, just neck. If it's on the arm, it's, you know, axilla, whatever is relevant. You palpate there, and that's bullet six, or only five if you didn't examine the neck otherwise. Next, we'll go on to the skin examination. The skin examination breaks down the body into a number of areas, and each of these is a separate bullet point. So you can click and pick up to 12 of these if it's medically necessary and relevant. So in this case, we could also do the neuropsychiatric. We have our two choices here for the a psychiatric overview, orientation to time, place, and person, and the mood and affect. Why are these relevant to us as dermatologists? Well, the patient should be able to cooperate with the workup and the treatment and the assessment that's medically necessary. It is not unreasonable to know that your patient is still with it and is functional and can participate in their own care. Now we go back to the skin. Let's say in this case, the patient won't even take off his shirt, but he does pull up his sleeves. With the neck and psych and the limited exam of the skin you see here, we have the 12 bullets we need for a detailed exam. If he pulls up his shirt, you have 13 bullets because what you add in on there is you add the abdomen on there. You actually add the back too if he lets you look at his back. But all you need is 12 for 99214 and only six for 99213. So what you've done on here, when you have it all done and filled in on there, you can pick more bullets if you want to. You can look at the extremities. You can be as detailed as you want to be. And the examination results, based on what we picked, is a detailed examination. That is good enough for a level four follow-up visit. Medical decision-making is the part that usually people find confusing because it's not as straightforward as counting bullet points. And most insurers, or not most, but many, will want medical decision-making as one of the two elements for patients, meaning they want physical and medical decision-making or history and medical decision-making, as opposed to simply doing a history and physical and calling it quits and billing for that. And again, each insurer varies, and it makes it clever and a good idea for you to go ahead and choose medical decision-making because it shows what you're thinking if there are ever issues where the chart is reviewed. So let's go into medical decision-making. We go ahead, and if you want explanations, you simply click on the upper right corner, and it talks about levels of B&M, and it talks about all the things you have to do. And again, the two to three, two of the three sub-elements must have selections. And again, moderate complexity, which is where we'd like to be if you want a level four, low complexity for level three, involves slightly different issues. 
Number of diagnoses is limited for low complexity. It's multiple for, no, for moderate. Data reviewed is limited for low complexity, moderate for a moderate complexity, and the table of risk is low for low complexity, moderate for moderate complexity. So this, in reality, for this case, we tap to select a problem. And each of these options will have a value. There are audit sheets that can be used that will show you how to value these, how many points to give you to add them up as an audit reward. This is even simpler. You simply click what's here, a new problem where you plan additional workup. You're worried about a melanoma. So we've done that. We've got one new problem. There could be other by the ways, other problems, but let's be minimalist for the sake of clarity. We then go to data to be reviewed. Well, you're going to order a derm tech. Minimalist again, we're just going to do just one. And we go back to the source. If a diagnostic service is ordered, planned, or scheduled, or performed at the time of the EM encounter, the type of service, e.g., lab or x ray, should be documented. So you say, you know, you simply order derm tech or perform a derm tech, you've done it there. Now, the part most people find confusing now, this most confusing part of the documentation, is the table of risk. But it really is fairly simple. You click on presenting problems, and it gives you a list of possible problems. And again, behind the application is a scoring sheet because these have different values. So if you look down this and you think, what is comparable to what we're looking at in terms of risk and intensity? Well, a lip minor problem such as insect bite, or you could do a venipuncture, a little tinea, now nah, low risk. Two or most self-limited problems, no. One chronic stable disease, we haven't addressed that. Acute or uncomplicated illness, no. One or more chronic illnesses, no. Two or more stable. But aha, part of the way down, we find undiagnosed new problem with uncertain diagnosis, e.g. lump and breast. A lump in breast means rule out breast cancer, a potentially life-threatening disease. Changing mole on arm, potential melanoma, life-threatening disease. So you pick that, and again, it's undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis. So we've done that on the table of risk, and right now we're at what is called straightforward decision-making, not moderate complexity. Arguably, we have a level four documentation based on history and physical, but you think, can we actually get this up to a moderate complexity right now, which is two jumps? Well, go back in here. We found what we had so far, and now we go ahead and let's look at diagnostic procedures ordered. If we look at the procedures, when we order a derm tech, what are we getting? We're getting a procedure that can be very valuable and life-saving, as can a chest x-ray, an EKG, urinalysis, an ultrasound, but there's no risk to the patient. We're not coming at them with a knife or poking a tube into some darkened place where the sun never shines. We are simply ordering a test that the obtaining of the test itself is low risk. When you put that in and it plugs in the formula, we are now up to moderate complexity. That second box gets us right there, and we show the result. We are at a 99214, a very clean 99214 that lets you be paid for your time in obtaining this test, which is not a billable or separately reportable or codable test. And just a reminder, 99214 talks about the specifics here, the office or other outpatient visit for the evaluation and management of an established patient, which requires at least two of the three key components, a detailed history, we're there, a detailed exam, and moderate complexity decision-making. We've got all three on there. So we have made it. And this, in my venue, pays about $125. It's higher in some places, lower than others. If you get the app, you can find it there. You can also look at the guidelines in general within the app, or you can go ahead and go to the CMS website and get the guidelines for 1997 and 1995 guidelines that you can read at your leisure. Clinical examples. There are a number of vignettes which we will not go over in detail today, but let me just say that the examples support the complexity of a 99214, but simply having something comparable without the documentation doesn't get you there. So it only supports it if the documentation gets there. And I would like to now thank you for your time today and hope you enjoy this and hope you find the handout useful. Thank you.